members of the faculty and staff, family and friends of the graduates, and members of the graduating class of 2022. Welcome to the undergraduate commencement ceremony for the Haas School of Business. I'm Ann Harrison, Dean of the Haas School. It is my great pleasure to officiate at today's ceremony, the first in-person undergraduate commencement we have held since 2019. You don't know how happy that makes me. I am delighted for all of you, our graduates, and for your families, partners, and friends who get to celebrate this special day with you. To our graduates, the great skills that you have mastered during your time at Berkeley go beyond those of a bachelor in business. In addition to accounting, marketing, strategy, entrepreneurship, sustainability, you have learned how to persevere against the strongest headwinds, how to keep your spirits high when the world around you was struggling, and how to achieve miracles during a global pandemic. It was hard, and in many ways, it was not the college experience that you had hoped for. But you have lived through it and come out on the other side to start exciting new lives with a new appreciation of how precious life is and how change is the only constant in our lives. I don't want to make light of the immense challenges you have faced, the isolation, the uncertainty, the added complexities of living through COVID, maybe while caring for loved ones at home or working to fund your education. These were tough lessons whose impact we have yet to fully comprehend. It is often during such immense challenges that we learn who we really are, how resourceful we are, and how resilient we can be. So, I salute you. You are an inspiration to us all. I have no doubt you will accomplish whatever you set your minds to. You also stand out as a diverse group in so many ways. 52% of our undergraduates are women. Forty-seven percent are obtaining a simultaneous degree in another college and major. And 17 percent are the first in their families to attend college. Some of you bring important life and professional experience to your classrooms and to your cohorts. And many of you have made time to give back to your classmates, to Haas, or to your community. You are diverse also in terms of interests and career paths. In your graduating class, we celebrate our largest cohort, our Bachelor of Science graduates, including four-year Berkeley undergraduates and our transfer students. The second cohort of our Management Entrepreneurship and Technology, or MET, program in partnership with the College of Engineering. The first cohort of our Global Management program. Also known as GMP, which spends one semester studying in London. Amazingly, 10 of this GMP cohort out of 33 students graduated a year or a semester early. And, and also, 
Our inaugural Robinson Life Science Business and Entrepreneurship Program, LSBE, a partnership with the Molecular Cell and Biology major, which is graduating its first cohort of 10 students. Look next to you, look in front and behind you. You are surrounded by some of the smartest, the boldest, the coolest people you will ever meet anywhere in the world. Stay connected to each other. Help each other succeed. That is among the greatest gifts of your degree. Beyond your own class, today you will join an extensive network of nearly 42,000 Haas alumni around the world. Take advantage of this network, your network. When you reach your new destination, look up your fellow alumni and plug into that network. Lean on it and contribute to it. It will get stronger as a result. When you encounter talented younger people who might benefit from a business degree, encourage them and send them our way. You are a tremendous resource to refer folks back to Haas. Hire Haas. Send us your job listings and reach out to your classmates. There is no nobler thing in business than to create a job for someone. When you have a chance, Give back to Haas. Make it possible for the next generation of talented business leaders to get the education that will launch their careers and achievements. Most of all, stay connected to Haas and register your contact information on the school's online at Cal alumni community. That's how others will find you. We are so very proud of your achievement in getting to this point, proud of you starting the next phase of your careers, and proud of the thought that you will be our ambassadors for Berkeley Haas. Before I introduce our commencement speaker, I would like to offer special thanks to a group of individuals who have worked so hard and sacrificed so much to make today possible. I'm referring to your parents, your family, and friends. of soon-to-be graduates. You are true partners in the achievement that we celebrate today, and we thank you. Would the graduating students please join me in a round of applause to honor these very special people. One of the great traditions at the Haas School is choosing the commencement speaker. Each year, we call upon an alum of uncommon distinction to address the graduating class, someone who embodies a commitment to excellence and a distinguished record of achievement, someone who personifies our defining leadership principles. I'm honored today to introduce your 2022 commencement speaker, Aaron McDaniel. Aaron is an entrepreneur, a corporate leader, a speaker, and an author. He's also a graduate of your program, class of 2004. At the age of 27, Aaron was one of the youngest to serve as regional vice president at AT&T. An alumnus of AT&T's flagship leadership development program, Aaron was also a Diamond Club Award winner in the top 1% of sales managers worldwide. Aaron is also a successful serial entrepreneur. Three of his companies have been acquired. He has brought his startup experience back into the Haas classroom and has remained actively engaged with your program, as we hope you will. Aaron is a founding partner at Grow Scale, a commercial real estate private equity firm and the co-founder of 10X Innovation Lab, a global accelerator and innovation consulting firm. He's also the vice chair of the board of the nonprofit Project Giving Kids. 
Erin is also the author of three books. Two are The Young Professional's Guide to the Working World and The Young Professional's Guide to Managing. His new book, Global Class, out this fall, explores how the world's fastest growing companies expand globally. He's been written about in Forbes, Bloomberg, US News and World Report, and is a sought after speaker. I cannot think of a better person to address our wonderful graduates today. Please join me in welcoming Aaron McDaniel. Thank you, Dean Harrison. Good morning. Welcome friends and loved ones, and especially you, 2022 Haas graduates. It is such a tremendous honor to be given the chance to share this momentous occasion with you. And I thought I'd start my speech today with a little bit of a story from a time long ago. The year was 2004. It was a time when the restaurant Mezzo was called Intermezzo before the original building it was in burned down. Blazing fast 1.5 megabit internet allowed Cal students to download an endless amount of music for free using a magical software called Kazaa after the mean US government shut down its predecessor, Napster. The best late night snack at the Durant Center food court was Dollar Noodle from Yokohama Station. Imagine a meal for a dollar. The coolest device that everyone wanted was one of these, a Motorola Razor. Parents, you remember how cool these things were, right? YouTube was a few months from being invented, and you graduates were still in preschool. <laughs> That, for most of you, that, that year, I had the honor of addressing my fellow Cal graduates as the university-wide commencement speaker. And I thought it would be interesting in preparing for today to go back and watch that video of my speech and uh, share my perspectives on how life changed between now and then. In re-watching that video, here's what I noticed. Man, I looked young and full of energy. There was an underlying optimism and hopefulness a sense of pride and accomplishment, and a deep appreciation for Cal and Haas and the experience that I had just had. Here are a couple of things that I'd said back then. While today is a celebration for the graduates, it's really so much more. It's a celebration of everything and everyone who has made us into the people we are today. Our teachers who taught us to question the world and find our own answers. Our friends who supported us all along the way our mentors who got us to believe in ourselves, and most importantly, our families who sacrificed so that we may have success. Today is dedicated to you. I uh, definitely still agree with that. At the end of my speech, I shared a rather lengthy poem I wrote called College is a State of Mind, with uh, one of the lines being, but college will stay with us long after we passed on the baton. Looking back, I have so many fond memories of my time at Haas, both inside the classroom and through extracurricular activities. So as you're sitting here today, I invite you to look back on your fondest Cal and Haas memories. Now, one moment that uh, stuck out for me in particular was uh, being crowned the very first Mr. Business <laughs> as part of the, uh, the pageant charity event put on by the uh, Asian Business Association. My award at the time was an iPod, which was a big deal. Now, uh, more from uh, class projects and student clubs than uh, pageants, there are so many things I learned from Haas that helped me avoid mistakes early in my career, although there are still definitely some lessons I had to learn the hard way. Like three months into my first job after graduating, when I had my first performance review. Now, at the time, I was working at AT&T as part of this leadership development program where I'd been put in charge of 17 customer service reps who'd been at the company longer than I'd been alive. Now, I remember expecting fireworks. I, I thought my boss was going to invite me in, tell me I was doing a great job, and give me a raise and a special bonus, and tell me I was on the fast track to promotion. Uh, instead, shortly after I sat down, she said, you know, Aaron, you seem like a smart person, but... I'm not even sure you really understand how to do your job. She continued, I haven't really received much feedback or communication from you, so I'm really unsure of your performance. Ouch. <laughs> I was so used to positive reinforcement that this little dose of reality stung. But it was also a very illuminating moment because 
I actually had intentionally not bothered my boss, instead asking an endless amount of questions to all of my peers. See, I, I hadn't realized the counterintuitive concept of managing your boss, and he needed to understand how she liked to communicate and adapting my style as to help her, support her in, in making the organization a success in reaching our goals. Uh, another lesson that I had to learn early in my career came after attending a wedding of two coworkers up in wine country. We all had a great time, and the, uh, the Monday after, one of the vice presidents in attendance came up to me in the office, and he said, Aaron, I am so glad you were at that wedding, because if you weren't there, then I would have been the drunkest one there. <laughs> so, uh, double ouch. <laughs> Let's just say that I, I had to learn that just because I was coworkers outside of work didn't mean what happened wouldn't make its way back to the office. So thinking back on that young college graduate that I was during my first speech versus who I am now, a, a few pieces of advice rose to the surface. Things that I wish the young college graduate me knew back then to make the years of life and work to follow more successful. So I thought about sharing everything from the warm and fuzzy like to tell others when you're proud of them and to allow yourself to be proud of you. To the more practical, like uh, reminding myself to buy Bitcoin when it was only worth a couple dollars. But ultimately, uh, three pieces of advice rose to the surface as catalysts behind the success I experienced and have seen in others who are reaching the apex of their fields. Now each of these uh, refer to a shift in mindset because as this fortune cookie fortune that I got from Dumpling uh, Express two weeks ago, when I was uh, picking up my regalia for today, it says, all personal breakthroughs begin with a change in beliefs. Number one, iterate. Now this first one ties closely to what I teach in my entrepreneurship classes, and I would be remiss not to mention it. To iterate is to be flexible and adapt when things don't go as planned, coming up with new options, and never quitting until you reach your end goal. Now, while this is pretty straightforward, it can be pretty challenging because from this point on, you won't have the structure that you're used to. You see, school has made us accustomed to a set path with a clear plan. But let me tell you that from here on out, that set path doesn't exist. It's no longer a multiple choice question, it's an essay question. And there's an unlimited number of answers, you get to write your own story. At this point, you're used to these four-year cycles. So in high school, the first three years, you were studying, taking your required classes. And then that fourth year, you were looking ahead to college, taking standardized tests and applying to schools. Then you came here to Berkeley, uh, another four-year cycle. The first three years, taking all of your required classes. That fourth year, looking ahead, make, writing your resume, applying to and interviewing for different jobs. Well, now that you're graduating, the next step isn't another four-year cycle. It's a 40-year cycle which can be kind of hard to navigate. You know, even those who uh, are going into one of the ABC professions, accounting, banking, consulting, with plans to go work for two, three years and go back and get your MBA, eventually this situation is on the horizon for you guys. So when you feel uncertain about your career, being iterative helps you create structure, a system that helps you constantly test new strategies, learn, and act on what you've learned. So being iterative, also referred to in business speak as being agile, recognizes that a career is an accumulation of experiences instead of a linear path. So there's no single right way to do things. And in tough moments, realize that you can always adapt. So keep the same ultimate goals and core values, but take a flexible path to get there. So there are two ways to implement this iterative mindset in your careers and lives. The first is to be open to opportunity. So this can be tough if you're too rigid in the path that you've set for yourself. See, if you cling too tightly to a set plan, you close yourself off from opportunity and set yourself up for disappointment when life, as it invariably does, ends up working out different than we thought it would. So when you're open to opportunity, you aren't just limited to the ideas you can think of, but open to experiences beyond your wildest dreams. Being open to opportunity has been a driver in my entrepreneurial career, and if you looked at the wide assortment of companies I've started, you'd see a pattern of being open to opportunity instead of some grand structured plan. So custom wedding invitations, portable beer pong tables, a taxi app that came out around the same time as Uber, a crowdfunding platform, a fintech app, a global innovation consultancy, and a real estate private equity firm. Most came from opportunities I didn't explicitly seek out. And while some succeeded and some failed, each of these seemingly different experiences was an iteration on a nonlinear path 
that have given me the skills and perspectives that help me in the ventures that I'm working on today. Now, inherently linked to being open to opportunity is to take action when opportunity presents itself. Step outside of your comfort zones. So I definitely did during the swimsuit competition of the Mr. Business pageant. Uh, I did when I had to manage a team that had been at the company longer than I'd been alive at AT&T, and I definitely stepped out of my comfort zone when I was called a criminal on national television when I was pitching one of my businesses on ABC's Shark Tank. The other key to effectively iterating is to be comfortable with failure. Failure is table stakes. Things often did not go as I wanted them to, and I made many mistakes along the way. But like I teach my class, your first plan likely won't be right, and that's okay. Treat it as a minimum viable product, an MVP, and when things don't go as expected, pivot and come up with a new path. Now, my advice for dealing with the failure that will invariably occur is encapsulated in two sayings that I have my young daughters recite when challenges arise. So when they get frustrated because what they're doing isn't working, whether that be attempting to assemble a puzzle or struggling to tie their shoelaces, I have them say, there's always a way. There is always a path on the other side of failure. And the other saying, when they fall off their bike or skin their knee, I have them dry their tears and say, I'm strong, I'm brave, I get up when I fall down. Now, getting over how silly it may feel, saying these affirmations to yourself in tough times will help you focus on what's next instead of dwelling on the failure that just occurred. Iterate by being open to opportunities outside your comfort zone and persevere amidst failure. My next piece of advice is to be an enabler. So from my experience, the two best ways to learn are one, by doing it, and two, by teaching others how to do it. And teaching in particular is a great way to learn because as you teach, you're reminded of key insights helping you practice what you preach. Plus, from a practical perspective, you don't want to look like an idiot in front of the people you're teaching, so you tend to make sure you put in the work so that you understand the topic. <laughs> Teaching enables others, and at its core, the driver behind teaching is to enable others, helping them accomplish more. And while the traditional image of a teacher is someone standing at the front of a classroom, you can teach and help others in different ways, many of them behind the scenes. Both now and in the future, there are many skills and lessons you learn that you can teach others, enabling them. Our experiences are built on top of one another, and one of the hidden joys of life is to see those who we have helped succeed. But teaching is only one of many ways to enable others. As I'm sure you're aware, there is a whole team here at Haas, and in particular in the undergraduate office, who enable our school to be one of the top programs in the country and who helped enable each of you during your time here. And while all of them recognize recognition and applause, I'd like to recognize three of them who have enabled literally thousands of Haas students over the years, a combined 72 years. So Barbara Falcons, Sojourner Blair, Dresden John, where are you at? All right, back, backstage. We're clapping for you three. Each, each of them retiring this year. Uh, more practically, I've learned from my career that people want enablers on their team and those who help others reach their goals. In the realm of business, no matter what your job function, you always have a customer. And even if you don't interact with your company's end clients, you have an internal customer to serve. So enabling your customer will lead to success no matter what metrics you are measured by. Think about how to make others successful and focus on helping your team achieve its goals. People are watching, even when you think they aren't. I've heard many successful people talk about how more often than not, they don't go search opportunity. Opportunity comes to them. And when you're open to opportunity, as I suggested in my first piece of advice, exciting things can happen. So enable others to reach their goals, and opportunities will come to help you reach yours. My third piece of advice is to focus on asking the right questions instead of searching for the right answers. So, so much of your coursework has been centered on finding the right answers, the solution to a problem set, the strategy in a case study, the right internships to apply for. But on the road that lies ahead, there is often no right answer. There are just choices among options. And that's why it's far better to focus on asking the right questions. Focusing on finding answers creates frustration, anxiety, and doubt. Asking yourself the right questions creates options and opportunities. 
So as you go through your career journey, a question you may find yourself asking is, what is my job? The default answer being something that resembles a job description. But the more important question that's less often asked is, why am I here? What can you uniquely contribute? What can you do? What impact can you have that is above and beyond your job description? And realize the answer doesn't have to be some elaborate strategy that increases company earnings by 50 cents a share. My first job out of college, the call center that I was a manager in, had to move offices 40 miles away. And let's just say that the, uh, the staff was not very happy about this change. So to help address the frustrations, I teamed up with a peer of mine and we created the Morale Committee, bringing together a group of reps to create programs to celebrate and recognize people in the office during a time of low morale. I was pretty proud of the fact that this morale committee continued on for a few years after I left the position, long after that uh, office relocation was complete. Don't ask yourself, how can I advance my career? Instead, ask, how can I help others succeed? Remember that when you support others, people notice and opportunities eventually follow. And don't ask yourself, did I succeed? Comparing yourself to some measure valued by society. Instead, ask, what can I learn from these experiences? Now, sometimes this can be hard, especially when failure is involved, but asking yourself this sets you up to learn from your experiences. So ask yourself the right questions. It makes finding the answers easier. Now, there's one more piece of advice, uh, one thought that I'd like to leave you with, uh, a thought that came to me about a decade ago at a very unexpected time and place. I was actually on a date. <laughs> and uh, we had just finished our entrees at a restaurant and we're browsing the dessert menus. And after a minute or two, my girlfriend at the time, now wife, said, I'm having trouble deciding which uh, dessert to get. I could either go with the panna cotta or the tiramisu. They both look pretty good. And without thinking, I kind of jokingly said, get both. We don't live in an either or world, we live in an and world. And uh, the benefits of getting seconds on dessert aside, the thought immediately struck me and really true and applicable to many aspects of life. And the saying has stuck with me and over the years has become a core part of my mindset. And there have been many times when I face a tough situation where I seemingly had to choose between mutually exclusive options where I use that mindset. And this, this thought is particularly important in the world that we live in today. At every turn, people are attempting to classify things as good or bad, right or wrong, with very little gray area in between, further amplified by the echo chambers that we spend time in. In many cases, you don't have to choose one or the other. There's a way to have or be both. And it doesn't have to be nature or nurture, Coke or Pepsi. <laughs> Living in an and world is also about diversity and the value of being open to those with different viewpoints and experiences. There is often an and instead of an or. Failing and succeeding, career and family, profiting and positively impacting society. Remember, we don't live in an either-or world, we live in an and world. Now, when I listened to that first commencement speech I gave almost half my life ago, some of the advice that I've shared today is embedded within. But back then I only understood things at a surface level, I lacked experience. Back then it was pretty simple and then life got pretty complex. So when you don't fully understand what you're getting into, sometimes things seem simple. And then when you get into it, they become a whole lot more complicated. But then, somewhere down the line, finally, years or decades later, after you've come to understand things better through lived experience, it gets simple again. So when you're in the middle, admired by confusion and complexity, don't get frustrated. It's all part of the process. And as I shared previously, at the end of my first commencement speech all those years ago, I had recited a poem that I had written. So in the spirit of continuity, I have a new poem to share with you today. But in the spirit of simplicity, and because you've had to listen to me long enough, uh, instead of sharing a long multiverse composition, the poem I wrote for this occasion is a haiku. Enable others. Iterate, ask self questions. Live in an and world. It has been a tremendous honor to speak with you today. Congratulations 2022 Haas graduates. I wish each of you luck in building an and world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aaron, for those thoughtful insights. We really appreciate you sharing your story with the class of 2022. You are the quintessential Berkeley leader.
Each year, the undergraduate program grants the departmental citation to the student with the most outstanding academic achievement in the field of business. This year's departmental citation goes to Joshua Greenberg. four years at Berkeley and Haas, Josh has approached every lecture and assignment with a sense of curiosity and a thirst for knowledge. With that same spirit of inquiry, Josh has spent his time at Cal as a conscientious, inspirational, and active leader within Berkeley's Jewish community. Josh is graduating with a degree in business administration and a minor in data science. After after graduation, Josh will work in finance at Apple. Josh credits Haas with teaching him not only the financial and analytic skills he will need in his career, but also how to collaborate and communicate effectively with others. Josh, I need to give you your award. <laughs> so, here is your award. Congratulations. I now have the pleasure to announce a set of awards that are very dear to every Hasi's heart. These awards recognize students whose work and actions have exemplified our defining leadership principles. The winners were nominated and selected by classmates, staff, and faculty. The first award questioned the status quo. We champion bold ideas, take intelligent risks, and accept sensible failure. That is one of the hallmarks of Berkeley. The question the status quo award goes to Vanshika Sapra. Passionate, goal-oriented, and hardworking, Vanshika represents all the core values here at Haas. As an international and a transfer student, she has, she has truly integrated herself into the Haas community while aiming to grow and improve it as well. She was nominated in recognition of her principled and thoughtful approach to helping others learn and grow. Confidence without attitude. That is how recruiters describe Haas students. Because they make decisions based on evidence and analysis, which gives them the confidence, but not the attitude, to lead through trust and collaboration. The award for confidence without attitude goes to Gina Chong. In her first year, as classes went remote, Gina decided to pursue her lifelong dream of being the CEO of her own skincare company, City Face. It takes remarkable confidence to go through the ups and downs of launching a new company and in a global pandemic. Her nominators tell us that Gina has done so without attitude and while caring for all those around her.
student always. Our community is designed for curiosity and lifelong pursuit of personal and intellectual growth. Our Students Always Awards goes to Anna Katarina Helen Giebel. After growing up in a small town in Germany, Katarina came to the United States to study liberal arts, which allowed her to explore her many interests and passions. She has co-founded Cases Over Coffee at Berkeley, and she has served as its president to help her peers explore various career paths. Upon graduation, Katarina will join McKinsey in San Francisco, where she aspires to be a student, always. Her fellow students noted that Katerina exemplifies student always because she actively seeks out other people's perspectives and works on constantly expanding her own horizons. Please join me in applause. Beyond yourself, we shape our world by leading ethically and responsibly. For the Beyond Yourself Award, her fellow classmates and faculty have selected Anna Shim. Anna Shim is a member of the inaugural class of the Global Management Program and studied, and studied abroad in London, Geneva, and Korea during her four years here. She has served in leadership roles for the Haas Business School Association, better known as HBSA, Alpha Delta Pi, and the Collegiate Business Association. She has represented Haas and placed in the National Diversity Case Competition in Indiana and the International Thamasat Undergraduate Business Challenge. She has also in interned for startups like Curology, Snack Pass, and Coursera. After graduation, she will work as a mergers and acquisitions management consultant at PricewaterhouseCoopers in Los Angeles. Anna was nominated because she has always devoted her time at Cal and Haas to improving the lives of the people around her. Please join me in applause for Anna. <laughs> Anna, Please come back to the podium. <laughs> At the HBSA as the HBSA president for the 2021-2022 school year, Anna now has the pleasure of introducing our student speaker, Sahil Shangal. Anna served in HBSA for four years as the first director of GMP Integration, as executive vice president while a junior, and now as president. She has made, made HBSA more diverse and inclusive every year, improving the culture of the organization and of Berkeley Haas, while working closely with the undergraduate program office and her executive team to organize student events. She says all of this would not have been possible without her wonderful VPs, her directors, and student associates. Thank you, Dean. Sorry, this will be more of like a serious speech. <laughs> three months. Today marks three months. For those of you who may not know, my one and only 25-year-old brother, Askel, who was also a Cal alum, suddenly died in his sleep on February 16th, 2022. I vividly remember the pure shock I felt hearing and processing the news from my Korean immigrant parents. My first thought was, what have I been doing? 
That entire week, month even, I had been stressed about schools, clubs, and my personal inconveniences, not being able to prioritize family and say a proper goodbye to my brother. Overwhelmed by responsibilities and my environment, I had lost sight of who I was and where I came from. At the time, I thought, there is no way I am getting through this. I felt weak. Every little task seemed impossible. My world was falling apart. If you told me then that I would be standing up here today, I would not have believed you. But exactly three months later, and here I am, graduating as a proud Golden Bear in Hossie with the rest of my peers and keeping the memory of my brother alive. Am I fully healed? Absolutely not. Do I still grieve every day? Of course. But am I still getting out of bed every morning, having a positive attitude, and focusing on what I can control in my life? Yes. I am a living testament that you can find the silver lining and persevere through any difficult circumstance that life throws at you. Though my case be more severe, that's what Berkeley Haas has taught each and every one of us, resilience. Throughout these past four years or two years for junior transfers, we survived through the fires, power outages, orange skies, an entire global pandemic, and Zoom University. All 475 of us Haas graduates have been through our own adversities, but we've also overcome these challenges, and that's how we made it here today. Especially as Berkeley Haas students, we often downplay our achievements and are never fully satisfied with ourselves, myself included. But my biggest key takeaway that I want to share with you is don't wait to be happy. Remember when you were in high school? You work so hard and delay your happiness until you get into a good college. You get into UC Berkeley, the number one public university, but your joy only lasts, <laughs> but your joy only lasts as long as the confetti in your acceptance letter, and you decide you'll be happy when you get into a competitive business org or consulting club. You finally get into that student org, but then, oh wait, you need to work on your Haas apps, so you push your contentment once again until you get into the number three business school in the nation. <laughs> you see, congrats as you open your Haas acceptance letter. But now it's recruiting season, so you're going to delay your happiness until you secure your dream job. You get that amazing offer, but now you have to focus on academics to graduate. You finally get your BS in business degree from Berkeley, but now you're not going to be happy until you get promoted, get an MBA, start your business, get married, have children. See my point? Don't get me wrong. Our goals and ambitions are important, and we wouldn't be here without our drive. But don't forget to find the joy in the little things, enjoy the process, and smell the roses along the way. Because life is too short, so live every day like it's your last. <laughs> Many of us constantly live in our heads, thinking about mistakes of the past or worries for the future, and constantly ask ourselves, what's next? But I encourage you to just take a second to breathe and live in the present. I hope you remember this as you, the author, write the next chapter of your life. I'd like to give a quick shout out to my HBSA exec seniors for all of their hard work. <laughs> and the UG office, especially Dresden, Sojourner, and Barbara, who are retiring this year. I also want to thank God my parents, and my brother who was supposed to physically be here but is now watching over me. And to each and every senior in the class of 2022, congratulations, we did it! <laughs> I'd now like to introduce our student commencement speaker, Sahil Shongle. Sahil is graduating with degrees in business and data science. During his time at Cal, he has consulted for local nonprofits, volunteered with our campus food pantry, and assisted the city with micro bond research. Upon graduation, Sahil be, will be working at Apple. In his free time, he enjoys spending time with loved ones, hiking, and astrophotography. Let's give it up for Sahil. Hi, everyone. Let me just get my speech real quick. All right. Hello. Before I begin, I'd like to say a few thank yous. Thank you to my family, friends, and classmates for all of the great memories. 
Thank you to my professors and mentors for all your insight and knowledge. And thank you, Cafe Think. Your french fries are phenomenal. <laughs> my name is Sahil Shangle, and it is an absolute honor to be giving this speech today. Class of 2022, congratulations. We did it. We just completed one of the best undergraduate business programs in the country. I, I still remember coming to Berkeley for the first time and setting this goal. I wanted to try every single restaurant in the city. I also remember realizing the very next year that that goal was completely unreasonable. This place is huge. It's a lot like the seemingly infinite number of restaurants in the city when I look at the Haas community here today. Y'all never cease to impress me. I genuinely did learn something new every single day. Four years and 92 restaurants later, I can safely say that there is no such thing as knowing it all. So today, I want to reflect on two of the things that made the last couple of years so special. First, the people. Look at those sitting next to you. On the surface, we all seem pretty similar. We've all taken the same core classes, satisfied the same university's requirements, and avoid stepping on the university seal. But in reality, we're so much more different than that. We are transfers, veterans, underrepresented minorities, international first generation and athletes. We are leaders, creators, uh, like <laughs> social media celebrities and everything in between. Best of all, we're a team. I'd like to think that it was the little things that made that happen. While we all had like a million things in our mind all the time and we may, might have had like more important things to do, we still made time to grab that plate of fries with a friend every week. The courtyard conversations never stopped. Taco Tuesdays continued. <laughs> and our relationships thrived. No matter what was going on, we made time for each other. I realize now just how important all that really was. Those relationships helped us understand one another beyond the simple classroom setting. They gave us the empathy we needed to succeed. They are what we will carry with us as we leave here today. So like I said, we'll always have the more important things going on, but I hope we can continue finding time for those around us. I truly believe that's one of the things that makes Berkeley Haas so special. The other thing would have to be the faculty and staff. On behalf of the class of 2022, thank you to every professor, administrator and, administrator, and staff member who makes the student experience as excellent as it is. My younger brother just uh, committed to Berkeley, and I can't, yeah, give it up for him. And I, I can't stop raving about the professors here who dress up for Halloween, the ones who bring selling sunset celebrities in on a whim, and the astounding facility quality. We deeply appreciate all of the time, passion, and knowledge you all share with us every single day. Now, to look forward for a moment, I can't wait for us to begin the next chapter in our lives. While I'm sad that our time here has come to an end, I can't help but smile when I think about all the new things that lie ahead. Many of us are about to find ourselves surrounded by new people in a new place. So many new opportunities and restaurants to try. As we all go our different ways, I want to challenge everyone here to not only continue learning about what it is you do, but the people around you doing it. This world is in need of more empathetic leaders. Let's be the ones to light that path. Here's to acting with integrity and creativity in service of others and to being students always. Class of 2022, congratulations and go Bears. Thank you so much, Sahil. We have outstanding faculty at the Haas School, and we are happy to honor them for their exemplary work in the classroom. This year's Chait Award for Excellence in Teaching for the undergraduate program goes to Haas lecturer Richard Hunsinger. <laughs> Thank you.
Richard is a graduate of our Berkeley Columbia Executive MBA program. He taught data and decisions, introduction to business analytics, and advanced business analytics in the undergraduate program. There were many words of praise from our students, and this review sums it up well. Richard Hunsinger is one of those professors who truly cares about his students' learning. He's incredibly available. He even gave us his phone number to reach out to him if we need anything. And he is continually encouraging us to reach out to him for office hours appointments in addition to his regularly scheduled office hours. He's engaging and formulates the class in such a way that allows the curious to always be exploring rather than saying, this is out of scope. Incredible professor. Congratulations, Richard. Each year, we also recognize the outstanding teaching of our graduate student instructors, or GSIs. Our 2022 winner is Paige Wehoff. Paige was GSI for UGBA 107, the social, <laughs> political, and ethical environment of business. Here is how one student described Paige's teaching style. Paige brought a fascinating perspective to the course, and her teaching style pushed me to think critically. She went above and beyond to meet with me outside of class, and her support was incredibly helpful. Paige truly is an icon who made my semester. Congratulations, Paige. We will now recognize the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. Here to assist me is the undergraduate program's Assistant Dean, Emma Hayes Daftery. Also joining us on stage for the presentation of degrees our Haas faculty members, Ryan Sloan, <laughs> Bill Fanning, <laughs> Clark Kellogg, Don Hanna, and our Teacher of the Year, Richard Hunsinger, <laughs> will be handing out scrolls. Oh, I should mention one more thing. We have another dean in attendance today, Dean Linda Burton. Linda, will you please stand up? <laughs> dean Burton is the dean of the School of Social Welfare. If I could please ask the families and friends not to block our graduates as they come up to the stage to receive their scrolls. Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science in Business Administration please rise? Sure. 
Jonah Cartman. Aman Rana. Solani Patel. Ankita Inamdar. Anna Rivelli. Liana Charchiyan. Sam Arias. Ivan Borzenko. Malu Kingsland. Katrina Tupis. Gabrielle Fong. Amanda Singh. Jonathan Fun. Andrew Liu. Josh Anthony Campos. Philip Perini. Tony Shi. Diana Kim. Julie Jones Calloway. Jyoti Tuladar. Stevens. Justin David Adamson. Natalia Nava Urbina. Tiffany Tron. Magali Venegas Conseco. Chelsea Lowe. John V. Doshi. Austin Sun. Sophia Wang. Sybil Wong. Lu Fei Cheng. Howard Lee. Daoming Wong. Mei Ivina Wang. Franklin McKenzie. Drew Christopher Saranyan. Adit 
Josine. Vaasuman Maza. Hira Malik. Ani Upikian. Angelica Ingtanluk Sao Mountain No. Lee Trung. Tron Pham. Christina Chan. Pauline Maninong. Devin Hazi. Kyle Reinflesh. Garrett Nielsen. Nick Proctor. Nina Chunk. Maya Bordis. Henry Poon. Nicholas Bloom. Kyle Mullis. Reese Whitley. Kaylin Crowker. Logan Alters. Matthew Sindrick. Jenna Kramer. Thomas Wyatt Wymore. Stephen Wynn. Christian Vargas. Louise Cortez Reyes. Joseph Babatau. Takahiro Origuchi. Baker, Mona Cesario, Quinn Etinayer, Nishi Kauza. Carter Horan. <laughs> Alex Carboni. <laughs> Julian Valera. <laughs> Michael Wong. <laughs> Dilraj Singh. Osmus, <laughs> Kevin Zhu. Hey, I know, I got it. Tony Stewart. 
Kevin Nguyen Chong. Daniel Sensipper. Griffin Fry. Matthew Taxa. Amit Pampati. The proud Tunisian Isker is Merli. Gabriela Van Eyck. Nicolo Manganzani. Ertuba Manhandale. Taha Khan. Zihan Wen. Ying Kelly Chen. Tong Xin Sen. Annabelle Longpin Ru. Dorcas Chung. Andrew Dong. Garrett Ivan. Joseph Ng. Dial Yoon. Jeff Kuo. Kai Karazowicz. Bukharan Sachdev. Dev Ocha. Matthew Halleck. Jose Hernandez. Charles Van. Grace G. Ariana Diaz. Angelina Espinosa. Kina Ha. Justin Wynn. <laughs> Kashish Junaya. Alan Lynn. Andre Mulga. Keon Irje. Ray Fu Wong. Aaron Birani. Rafael Brian Sumali. Carissa Nadia Tantiono. Gwendolyn Kowe Purnama. Sharice Natanya. Nicole Adepra Winra. Kiara Larissa. Tara Allegra Fermanto. Viola Lee. Violin Lee. Diego Gonzalez Lizardi. Ramika Banerjee. Neha Nagab. 
Mutu. Annika Rewatva. Pranav Muriong. Jiling Jo. Shuen Yi Gary Lu. Celine Werrett. <laughs> Megan Hansen. Amy Wang. Abby Tan. Sue Min, Amy O. Brandy Wong. Michelle Lin. Cindy Zhang. Kennedy K. Williams. Raj Dasani. Jeffrey Yo, <laughs> Raymond Chu, <laughs> Lillian Zhang, <laughs> Shirley Wong, Joshua Kim. Ethan Kang. Justin Hoganauer. Ryan Chen. Prangun Tuteha. Alexander Manis. Srava Basapatri. Elliot Larson. Anika Ramachandran. Rishma Murugan. <laughs> Ernesto Ramirez. <laughs> okay. S.Q. Ma. <laughs> Adrian Chu. <laughs> David Zhu. Derek Jang. Kate Ba. Sahil, ready. Isha Dahake. Priscilla Mendoza. Noah Harrell East. Cameron Kalis Harold. Gokche Guban. Brittany Adwa Botang. <laughs> Sophony Garavan. <laughs> J. 
Jukai Songai Makare. Nea Dasari. Shreya Mohanti. Ankita Sani. Kunal Adia. Adam Liu. Thomas Wynn. Alexandra Visic. Oren Eliyahu. Colette Simonian. Tina Tang. Kelly Pan. Victoria Lynn. Sicily Dang. Danny Ha. Hamun Tabazoi. Nolan Tricky Richard Liu Raul Haran Nikhil Mandava Ayato Kobayashi, Brian Chu, Jalen Chan, Michelle Sun, Eric Wang. Rena Yan. Grace Q. Ankita Kini. Song Dong Si, come on. Orgil Mankutar. Kelly Han. Grace Lamb. Suyash Jaju. Pranav Sashi. Christopher Samad. Isabella Chin. Yvette Yi. Adam Ng. Alton Rue. Devin Yuan. Helen Wang. Ashley Chung. Solomon Kong. E. 
Keyshawn Gill. Alex Tran. Delaram De Passan. Azin Abrahim Zadeh. Sandalina Satar. Ria Uthra, Luthra, Kenny Chang, Vanessa Lu, Josue Vallecia. Yeah. Kevin Wu. Yeah. Don Keneal Sachubuti. Yeah. Shudi Lin. Sarah Copanova. Nice Zareen Kakalia. Emily Tong. Claire Chang. Dylan Zhao. William Chen. Jackie Chen. Keisha Publicetti. Jabin Chambers. Ethan C. Dhruv Sudesh. Ayush Metra. Harrison Fiscus. Alexandria Marks. Grace Chen. Karina Masana. Madeline Wells. Daniel Rosenblit. Alina Thuhan Lam. Yuvia Mendoza. <laughs> Valerie Friedman. <laughs> Susanna Molly.
Simon Valencourt. Yeah. Nile Agawala. Shafali Krishan. Maurice Saldana. Alexandra Lipton. Crystal Tan. Andrea Clayman. Fahad Sillam. Elliot Clark. <laughs> Abigail Ow. <laughs> Lindsay Yunsin Lee. Lucia Chang Chirinos. <laughs> Harmon Meet Core. Yes. Andriana Artanaga Quintanilla. Adnan Ali Suchi Dananen. <laughs> Neha Shridur. <laughs> Rachit Parikh. Rishi Modi. Johnny Nguyen. Isla Teja. Ria Meta. Sunrika Sutsena. Kushi Malde. Shaylee Shaw. Jocelyn Lee. Imani Salazar Nali. Ria Verma. Anish Argawal. Andreas Moss. Tejas Thwar.
Shayanch Lohartika. Rajavish Mishra. Sonia Sethi. Melanie Zhao. Alara Guler. Javier Singh. Gauri Datta. Francis Indehing. Amy Guo. Hannah Vin. Sean Lin. Sorry. David Shao. Ethan Meta. Adric Kula. Yeah. Ryan Senense. Alexandra Sujin Jo. Samantha Dang. Eden Turgeman. Sultan Dildo. Ian Dong. James Yao. Yanni Neely. Mia Kimambadi. Stephanie Nekar. Emma Kuris. Grace Faber. Camila Wolf. Emily Barnhart Ross. Rebecca Matsu. Donna Karamzi. Errol Mose Sao. Shauna Hunauni. And Kira Terenzio. Ashwin Dawan. Max Glenn. Well, do. And Gerald Anthony Amario. Elizabeth Allison. Julia Liu. Amy Zhang. Joy Wong. Somya Mahindra. Faiz Kwaja. Remshab Goyal. 
Catherine Gong. Jessica Chow. Isabel Zhou. Kathleen Kong. Daniel Sung. Sharish Agawal. Juliana Chen. Zoya Khan. Josh Chestnut. Michelle Von Polipsky. Isabel Eddy. Uh, sorry, Elizabeth, excuse me. Christina Davenport. Julial Nuttall Smith. Claire Zhao. Sianna Knight. Noah Link. Olivia Reynoso. Magnus Aston. Malika Moge. Tali Meisner. Congratulations. Rashmika Vetturi. Chelsea Keno. Ardith Chavez. Varun Man, Sean Jane, Mark Oysterman, Eusterman, excuse me, and Michael Eusterman. Ankur Chuda. Gavin Levy. Engoberta Yu. Kaimali Kauyu Yacinto. Savannah Alexandra Harwood. Vaishnavi Kothi. <laughs> Chloe Lamb. James Wong. <laughs> Abdullah Khan. Andrew Pham. Ellen O. Zachary Murphy. Danielle Drizzlane. Anna Miller. Chase Winship. Chris Ahn. Mika Grimm. Edmar Rocha, Jr. Kijare Fikiri. Yash Brahmanbat. <laughs> Nina Hudeit. <laughs> Kalia Ann Rodich. 
Ian Kumat. Eric Dratu. Sydney Kin. Madeline Wong. Tiffany Thang. Cindy Chen Tang. Gina Chong. Anna Katarina Helen Gable. Sahil Shangul. Joshua Greenberg. Vanchika Sapra. Anna Shim. Would the graduates please rise? exciting moment. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the President and the Chancellor, I grant you the degree of Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. You may now move your tassels to the left. It's now official. All of you graduates have commenced a new lifelong relationship with the Haas School in Berkeley as alumni. We welcome you to this new role. We are full of pride for you today, and we eagerly anticipate your great accomplishments in the future. You have our best wishes for success. Congratulations! Please join us at a reception in the courtyard at the Haas School. As I bring the ceremony to a close, could the parents, family, and friends please remain in place and help me give a big final round of applause to our graduates as they recess out of the stadium to the tune of the Cal Fight Song. Thank you all for coming. The commencement ceremony is concluded.